In this presentation, we will discuss types of financial statement analysis, the most common types of financial statement analysis. These are going to be the tools that we use to analyze the financial statements. We'll go through them quickly and then give a little bit of detail on them, and then we'll give more detail in terms of how to calculate these items in future presentations. So we have the horizontal analysis, the vertical analysis, and the ratio analysis. Now there is some overlap here because obviously when we think about a horizontal and vertical analysis, we are using calculations such as ratios within that analysis, but we can break these things out into these three categories in general. The horizontal analysis is going to be a comparison typically from period to period. So we have one year versus another year. We're typically doing some type of analysis from period to period. That's going to be the horizontal type of analysis. A vertical analysis is a comparison within the same period. So we're comparing to a key component, a key numbered. For example, on the income statement, we'll compare everything to the goal of the income statement, the revenue generation, and we'll create a vertical analysis. The ratio analysis is us picking up key components within the financial statements using ratio analysis in order to help us get insight into the performance of the company or how the company is standing at that point in time. Standards for comparison. Note that as we go through these ratios, as we go through this analysis, we need to have some kind of standard. What's the benchmark? What are we comparing these ratios to so that we can get some insight in telling us what these ratios can give us for information into the future? We have the intercompany type of comparison. That's going to be a comparison with our own performance. For example, we might be comparing the prior year to the current year and looking at our intercompany performance. Then, of course, we have the competitors. So we might be benchmarking to our primary competitors. And ratio type of analysis really makes it much easier for us to do this type of comparison. And that's one of the major goals that we're going to have with some of the calculations that we have here. If we just look at the, the dollar amount, we can't really compare as easily to the competition. If we have ratios, we can, especially if the competition or who we want to benchmark to it has more or less in terms of total revenue but are in a related field and therefore the ratios will be much the same. So we want to be able to compare to the competitors with this type of analysis, industry standards. Another goal we might have, we might look at the standards in the industry as a whole and basically once again take our ratio analysis and be able to compare it on a ratio basis to the industry standard in a way that we could not so do with just a dollar amount standard oftentimes. We can also be comparing to guidelines, certain guidelines, and making sure with the ratio analysis to see if we are within those guidelines. Here's an example of horizontal analysis. We'll go into more detail about calculating the horizontal analysis, but just to get an idea, we'll typically have the current year, we'll have the prior year, and then we'll have the change, the change from the current year to the prior year, and then we're going to take the percentage change. And this is where we get to the ratio and the percentages are often going to be something that's going to help us to do some comparisons that we can't do as easily when we're looking at just the dollar amounts. For example, we might try to set a standard and say if there's a significant change over a certain percentage, even though the dollar change is going to be different for each account type, we could set some type of standard and say, hey, I'm going to take a look at everything over a, basically a 15% difference in terms of the percent change or something like that as a general rule. And this is going to be comparing, of course, one year to the prior year. So we're comparing periods in this case, typically of the same company when we're comparing horizontal analysis. Also note that you can say that this is a form of ratio analysis in some case because we are taking kind of a ratio of the change that is happening here compared to the prior year that's going to be a type of ratio that we are using but we're considering this in terms of the way it's formed out uh, going through the whole financial statement as a horizontal type analysis because we're basically comparing one period to another period so it's going to be a horizontal type of analysis but of course within that horizontal type of analysis of the financial statements we will be using ratios to break that out into the percentage change Here's the same thing for the income statement. So we have a horizontal analysis for the income statement. Current year, prior year, we have the change in that. And then we're, we're taking the percentage change. So we're taking the change from one year to the prior year. Horizontal analysis, same company over time. We can then take a look at these percentage changes and consider, especially on the income statement, now we have a performance document what a timing uh, timing statement how are we doing type of statement over a certain time period and we can go through these percentages and uh, consider once again the large percentages possibly set a standard of a percentage uh, over a certain standard we're going to look into 
and analyze and try to, to uh, get some insights into why there's such a, a different percentage change. We can compare the horizontal analysis to the vertical analysis. When we consider the vertical analysis, we're typically comparing to the same period. So we're, we're comparing different line items on the same period. You could think of it as taking the biggest line item or the most important line item on say the balance sheet in this case and comparing every other line to it. So in the current year, if we took the 20,000 and compared it to the total, the total assets, the 375, we are comparing everything in that format. So the 20,289 in cash divided by 375,319 gives us the 5.4% if we move the decimal over and that's gonna be our percentage. So we can consider that then kind of like a pie chart. You can imagine a pie chart type of analysis where you're saying well this is five percent or so 5.4 percent of the total assets we have the the short-term investments 14.4 percent of the total assets liability and then we did that for the current year and the prior year so we're not doing a, a year over year horizontal we're doing each of these vertically in this case a comparison only in this column relates to this column and then of course this column relates to this column we're not doing a horizontal but a vertical type of analysis we could do the same thing for the income statement where we would compare everything to in this case the most important number being net sales the sales number the generation of revenue so we would compare for example the cost of goods sold here would be 141048 cost of goods sold over the sales line which is 229234 two three four and that's going to give us the 61.5 percent 61.5 percent and we're going to compare everything on this line to the sales and get an idea of the percentage as compares to the goal being the generation of revenue once again this column only comparing to this column we're not doing a horizontal but vertical analysis this column for the prior year is going to be uh, related to this column then we have the ratio analysis. When we consider the ratio analysis, we break those out typically into four categories. So we're going to have the liquidity and efficiency. We have solvency. We have market prospects. So when we consider these categories, we want to be able to understand these categories and break out the ratios within these categories. We want to understand that we have the vertical analysis. We have the horizontal analysis. Then we have the ratios. And typically we want to break these information out into this categories for the ratio. So we have an objective and know what the ratio is there for. And that's going to be a very common type of test question as well. So they might just ask you, here's the ratio and what category is it there for? What's the goal of the ratio in terms of the categorization? In practice, of course, we want to have an idea of what the ratio is doing. And as we think about the ratios more and more, that's really the only way to kind of think about this. You want to just keep doing the ratios and then thinking about what the ratio is telling you and then analyze why the ratios would change. And as you do that more and more, you get a better idea of what that ratio is doing, what it is telling you. The liquidity ratios, we'll go over all these ratios uh, again as we calculate these ratios. But the liquidity ratios include the current ratio, the asset test ratio, the accounts receivable turnover ratio, the total asset turnover ratio, the inventory turnover, the day's sales uncollected, and the, and the day's sales and inventory note that the liquidity and efficiency are going to be the most common types of ratios. So if you got a question, you're saying, I don't know which category to put this ratio in. Well, then your best bet is probably the liquidity is in terms of statistics, <laughs> the liquidity and efficiency, uh, efficiency ratio, if you have no idea. And then we have the solvency ratios when that's going to be the debt ratio, the equity ratio, the debt to equity ratio and the times interest earned profitability ratios include the profit margin the return on total assets, the return on common stockholders equity, and then the market prospects, which include the price earnings ratio and the dividend yield.